responsible party group three. And Mr. Philip Cannon is also counsel for civil party group three. Thank you, Mr. President. The judgment of the trial chamber against the accused can get you at least lodge was pronounced on the 26th July 2010. The trial started and ended on the 28th November 2009. And the trial chamber issued its judgment on the 26th of July 2010. The chamber finds Kangkeev guilty. Pursuant to Articles 5, 6, and 29U, of the ECCC law on crimes against humanity, persecution on political grounds, subsuming the crimes against humanity of extermination, encompassing murder, enslavement, imprisonment, torture, including one instance of rape and other inhuman acts, and great bridges of the Geneva Conventions of 1949, willful killing, torture, and inhumane treatment, willfully causing great suffering or serious injury to body or health, willfully depriving a prisoner of war or civilian of the rights of a fair and regular trial, an unlawful confinement of a civilian. These crimes were committed in Phnom Penh and throughout the territory of Cambodia from 17 April 1975 through 6 January 1979. The chamber sentences can get you to a single sentence of 35 years of imprisonment with a reduction of five years due to the violation of Kang Kek Yip's rights occasioned by his illegal detention by the Cambodian military court between 10 May 1999 and 30 July 2007. The accused is entitled to credit for the entirety of his time spent in detention, that is from 10 May 1999 to 30 July 2007, under the authority of the Cambodian Military Court, and from 31st July 2007 until the judgment becomes final under the authority of the ECCC. For the national crimes, the judgment does not assess the national crimes in regards to Article 501, 506 of the 1956 Penal Code and Article 3 New of the ECCC Law. Declarations. All civil parties named under paragraph 645 to 650 have suffered harm as a direct consequence of the crimes for which Kang Gai Il has been convicted. The Chamber shall compile all statements of apology and acknowledgments of responsibility made by Kang Gai during the course of the trial. 
This compilation shall be posted on the ECCC official website within 14 days of the date of this judgment becoming final. It rejects all other civil party claims. Detention. The trial chamber convicts the can get ill in the detention until the judgment becomes final or until the Supreme Court chamber decides on the appeal. Civil party status. 24 civil party applications listed in paragraphs 647, 648 and 649 have been rejected by the trial chamber. The judgment was pronounced in public on the 26th of July 2010 and subject to appeal as set out in the internal rules of the ECCC. The appeal the Supreme Court Chamber was seized of the appeal against the judgment by the following parties. The co-prosecutors filed notice of appeal on 16 August 2010 on the error of law made by the trial judgment including the discretion and the cumulative uh, conviction. The co-prosecutors filed their notice of appeal and the appeal in October 2010 and in Khmer on the 18th of October 2010. There is no response from other concerned party to the filing of the co-prosecutors. The co-defense lawyers filed their notice of appeal on 24 August 2010 on the error of law that the judgment cannot be accepted, in particular on the personal jurisdiction and the single sentence of 35 years imprisonment. The appeal was made on the 18th of November 2010 and with the amendment uh, subsequently. The co-lawyers for civil party group 3 filed their response in December 2010 and then the co-prosecutors filed their observations on the appeal, the corrected appeal dated 16 March 2011. The co-lawyers for the accused replied to the response by the co-prosecutors on the 14th of January 2011 in Khmer and in English on the 17th February 2011. Co-lawyers for Civil Party Group 1 filed their immediate appeal on the 16th of September 2010 against the rejection of Civil Party status. This immediate, immediate appeal dated 30 September 2010 of the Supreme Court Chamber, the lawyers for the Civil Party Group 1 filed additional brief on the 18th of October 2010. There is no response from other parties to that filing. The co-lawyers for Civil Party Group 2 filed their notice of appeal on the 24th of August 2010 and on the 6th of September 2010 
against the judgment in regards to the rejection of five civil party applications and on the issue of reparations, they filed the appeal on the 25th of October 2010 and the 5th and on the 5th of November 2010 in English in Khmer on the 22nd October 2010. There is no response by other parties to these filings. The co-lawyers for civil party group 3 filed their notice of appeal on the 20th of August 2010 against the rejection of civil of six civil party applications in on the decision on reparations, and they filed their appeal in October 2010 in English and in the Khmer language on the 6th of October 2010. There is no response by other parties. On the appointment of the rapporteur judges, according to Rule 108, the Supreme Court Chamber's President appoints rapporteur judges to review the appeals into four categories. One, on the personal jurisdiction, by Judge Sam Sarebut and Judge Jaya Singhe. And on the issue of crimes against humanity by Judge Sundar and Judge Millard. On the issue of the sentencing, Judge Sundet and Judge Noguchi, and on the status of civil parties and reparations, Judge Jarnarun and Judge Millard. On the additional material and evidence based on the request by the lawyers for the defense and lawyers for the civil parties, group one, two, and three, they request to file additional material to the Supreme Court chamber. And on the 25th, of March 2011, we accepted to receive those new evidence and materials. The Supreme Court Chamber would like to remind all parties that during their oral submission, they need to bring to light those new evidence. Now we will open the floor for the first section of the appeal that is in regards to personal jurisdiction and I would like to give the floor now to the reporter charge. <coughs> Judge with the agreement from my co-reporter, I would like to now present the personal jurisdiction section of the appeal. The trial chamber observed that there is no preliminary objection to personal jurisdiction raised by the defense at the initial hearing, and the trial chamber rejected the later submissions on personal jurisdiction by the defense as belated. 
The trial chamber addressed the issue of personal jurisdiction on its own motion pursuant to Internal Rule 98.3 and concluded that the accused was among those who were most responsible. The trial chamber considered that there was no need to examine the issue of whether the accused was also a senior leader of the Democratic Kampuchea. Submissions by appellants. The defense appeals against the trial judgment on the ground that the trial chamber erred in fact and in law by deciding that the accused falls within the personal jurisdiction of the ECCC. The following are the defense supporting arguments in the accused appeal brief. The trial chamber erred in rejecting the defense's jurisdictional challenge as untimely under Internal Rule 89. The trial chamber erred in constructing the personal jurisdiction of the ECCC as two separate and distinct categories of persons senior leaders and those who were most responsible. And since the appellant was not a senior leader of the Democratic Kampuchea, he therefore cannot be amongst those who were most responsible. And the trial chamber erred by falling by failing to consider excavatory evidence. The defense requests that the Supreme Court Chamber order the release of the accused and find that the detention of Gang Gek Il has been a form of protection according to a witness. The co-prosecutors respond that defense arguments on personal jurisdiction that fail to meet minimum pleading requirements should be disregarded by the Supreme Court Chamber and also submit that under Internal Rule 89, the defense was required to raise any objections to jurisdiction in the initial hearing. Not only did the defense fail to do this, but the defense also indicated that it did not intend to challenge personal jurisdiction. The trial chamber correctly constructed the personal jurisdiction of the ECCC as to distinct categories of persons, senior leaders, and those who were most responsible. And the trial chamber correctly determined that the accused was amongst those who were most responsible. In its written reply to the co-prosecutor's response, the defense submits that. The co-prosecutors rely too heavily on the jurisprudence of international courts. International law should only be used at the ECCC in certain circumstances that are not present in this case. As such, international jurisprudence cannot be used to place the accused within the category of those who were most responsible and the co-prosecutors misinterpreted Internal Rule 89 in that personal jurisdiction is challenged on the basis of evidence produced during trial. Civil Party Group 3 filed a written response to the accused appeal brief requesting the Chamber to reject the defense arguments as manifestly unfounded. Thank you. The President the security officer, can you bring the accused to the dock?
President, before the accused is invited to make his observation regarding the appeal, in this proceeding, you are innocent until found guilty. You had the right to be informed of the charges against you as I just read out, and you had the right to legal representative of your choosing. And during each stage of the proceedings, you can exercise the right to remain silent. And you are invited to make a brief observation for the appeal. And you have five minutes. So please use the time appropriately. The accused. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Regarding the appeal, my main point in the appeal is on jurisdic personal jurisdiction. So this is purely a legal matter. And I give the authority to my legal representatives to act on my behalf, and that is the stand that I am maintaining. Thank you, the President. Thank you for your observation. The president, uh, we just observed that the accused maintained his position regarding the point raised in the appeal, and he gives the authority to his co-lawyers uh, to act on his behalf. You may now return to your seat. The President, uh, the Defense Council is now given the floor to make his oral submission in relation to the personal jurisdiction matter. The floor is his. Council Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours, National and International Judges. And good morning to everyone in and outside this courtroom. My name is Kasavut. I am representing Kang Kek Eo Elis Doj, the accused, who has found uh, by, uh, in the judgment of the trial chamber guilty and sentenced to 35 years of imprisonment regarding the crimes against humanity and grave breaches of the Geneva Convention of the 12th of August 1949. According to Articles 5, 6, and 29 new of the ECCC law. Your Honours, under the agreement between the United Nations and the Royal Government of Cambodia, the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia has been established for the purpose of prosecuting those people who have committed crimes against humanity, war crimes, genocide, and grave breaches 
of the Geneva Convention of the 12th of August 1949. Under the same agreement, both parties have a shared and common goal is to find justice for Cambodian people and at the same time to bring the national reconciliation and peace to Cambodian people and at the same time respect the sovereign of the Cambodian, a Cambodian rather. Under the agreement uh, between the United Nations and the Royal Government of Cambodia, Articles 1 and 2 new of the ECCC law, the power has been wasted with the chamber and that the jurisdictions matter have already been well set. First, the ECCC has jurisdiction to only bring to trial uh, in relation to crimes against uh, humanity, war crimes, genocide, grave breaches of the Geneva Convention of the 12th of August 1949. Two, the ECCC has the power to prosecute only the crimes that uh, were committed between the 17th of April 1975 through the 6th of January 1979. Three, the ECCC has the power to prosecute only crimes that have been committed within the territory of Cambodia. Four, the ECCC has the power to prosecute only the senior leaders of the Democratic Cambodia and those who were most responsible for the crimes. These are the jurisdictional conditions the Supreme Court Chamber shall reconsider. As a matter of fact, uh, the jurisdiction comprises of first, personal jurisdiction, territorial jurisdiction, three, temporal jurisdiction, and four, material or subject matter jurisdiction. If the trial, if the chamber has to finish admission by ending the culture of impunity, it shall consider carefully the crimes committed and also the personal characteristic of the accused. The scope of the jurisdiction has to be well determined by the criminal court because this is very important. Otherwise, it would uh, infringe uh, the rule of law and or the legality who were most responsible for the crimes. These are the jurisdictional conditions the Supreme Court Chamber shall reconsider. As a matter of fact, uh, the jurisdiction comprises of first, personal jurisdiction, territorial jurisdiction, three, temporal jurisdiction, and four, material or subject matter jurisdiction. If the trial, if the chamber has to finish admission by ending the culture of impunity, it shall consider carefully 
the crimes committed and also the personal characteristic of the accused. The scope of the jurisdiction has to be well determined by the criminal court because this is very important. Otherwise, it would uh, infringe uh, the rule of law and or the legality and the chamber itself. Regarding the temporal jurisdiction and the territorial jurisdiction and subject matter jurisdiction, and at the same time determining the crimes committed uh, are very important before a trial court or a court of law. This matter of personal jurisdiction may not include individuals or some key people who do not fall within the jurisdiction of the court. The material or subject matter jurisdiction will guide the court in relation to the crimes or the offenses committed by the accused person and that the chamber shall make a decision to identify whether such crimes are international or domestic crimes or just very simple or ordinary crimes domestically. In order to achieve this purpose and to eliminate uh, impunity, the interpretation of jurisdiction has to be rather broad and well considered and it shall cover both geographical features of the locations, the offenses itself and uh, themselves and the people concerned. However, according to our study, other tribunals have not maintained their position according to its wisdom and conscience. Other hybrid tribunals have compromised a lot during the course of admission when it comes to these matters. According to Rule 11 B and the jurisprudence of ICTY, the term senior leaders have been very well defined. They refer to those people whose roles and responsibilities were in the administrative hierarchy according to the law, the facto and the jure. And they were within the positions that could be considered as the most senior people, not the middle level people. Dutch himself hold a very lowest rank at the, at the, uh, during his time. According to the same jurisprudence of the ICTY, the identification of the roles, for example, the people who hold position in the standing committee or senior positions and political positions, for example, according to the negotiation with the international components, and on, only after such uh, negotiation that the uh, people's positions could have been uh, verified. For example, if the accused have uh, negotiated with international people, uh, counterparts, that the chamber may find him responsible or be in the position uh, of the very senior ones. According to the decision, uh, resolution 1531, the Security Council identified the criteria 
when define the senior positions. So who would be in these senior, uh, senior positions? Any order issued against a person must be issued against uh, someone who was the senior leader of the regime. According to the personal jurisdiction by the Sierra Leone court, it sets this clearly that uh, individuals who have committed crimes, grave breaches, against uh, the humanitarian law and that uh, the Sierra Leone law also includes or covers uh, individuals who have committed crimes which have threatened the construction and the implementation, uh, peace implementation at, uh, uh, within Sierra Leone. The personal jurisdiction of the ECCC has been referred to or has been stemming from the other important sources, the very controversial sources where the international bodies and Cambodian government uh, had uh, strong arguments and when, at the beginning when Cambodian government uh, appealed the United Nations to help establish the court to prosecute only the senior leaders of the Khmer Rouge and at the same time the United Nations consequently agreed uh, with uh, such uh, determination by the Cambodian government so that uh, such agreement could uh, be reached ultimately this chamber has been established. The personal jurisdiction of the ECCC has its limitation to strictly prosecute only senior leaders of the democratic Cambodia regime and those who were most responsible for the crimes within its temporal jurisdiction. Even there has been request uh, for a broader interpretation of the uh, jurisdiction so that the co-prosecutors could really have a bigger margin to maneuver when they would like to interpret uh, this jurisdiction. However, such a uh, request was bluntly rejected by the Cambodian government. Article 6.3 of the ECCC restricts the, the scope of investigation of the co-investigating uh, judges and the co-prosecutors to only investigate crimes against senior leaders of the Khmer Rouge regime and those who were most responsible for the crimes under the ECC law. Therefore, the law binds the OCP's or co-prosecutors discretion and the discretion of the co-investigating judges. These two bodies have to really stick to what's set in the rule, otherwise they would stray away from the law as set forth by the ECC law. 
during the trial proceedings before the, uh, the trial chamber, rather, the defense counsel for the accused challenged the court in relation to the personal jurisdiction over Kang Kek Eo Elis Doj. The defense argued that uh, the court had no jurisdiction over the accused and that uh, there were ample evidence uh, to prove that uh, Doj has not been bound uh, by Articles 1 and 2 of the ECC. The law. However, the judges failed to consider such uh, argument and that the proceedings continued uh, until its completion. Finally, the defense counsel tried again to include in uh, our closing statement to request the judges to re-examine the exculpatory evidence proving that the accused should not be bound by Articles 1 of the agreement between the Royal Government of Cambodia and United Nations and Articles 1 and 2 of the ECCC law. As the result, Time again, the judges failed to review the exculpatory evidence as requested by the defense counsel. On the 26th of July 2010, the trial chamber issued uh, its judgment uh, in case file 001 sentencing Dutch, uh, the chairman of S21, which was under com direct control of the general staff and the uh, national defense uh, head Son Hussein. Dutch was sentenced to 35 years of imprisonment. The trial chamber's judgment of the 26th of July 2011 convicts Deutsch and that although he has not been falling within its jurisdiction, the defense would like to maintain our position that uh, the chamber shall review uh, the, its uh, consideration in relation to the, de the definition of the senior leaders and those who were most responsible for the crimes before this court. At the tr trial court, uh, the defense counsel only challenged uh, the methods employed uh, by the co-prosecutors and the co-investigating judges and the trial chamber in defining personal jurisdiction over Deutsch. They try to include Deutsch in their jurisdiction ambit. However, the Defense Council is still convinced that Deutsch does not fall within such jurisdiction as follows. One, error on the personal jurisdiction by the trial chamber. Personal jurisdiction has been set against uh, the senior leaders of the Khmer Rouge and those who were most uh, responsible for the crimes and uh, the grave breaches of uh, a violence against the national and international laws. The agreement between the United Nations and the Royal Government of Cambodia regarding the prosecution under Cambodian law, the crimes uh, committed uh, during the period of the Democratic Cambodia and the ECCC law do not really set clearly the senior leaders and those who were most responsible for the crimes. In the agreement itself and in the ECCC law, 
no such provision uh, found that Kang Kek Eo was the most person responsible for the crimes committed. The question is, who were the senior leaders of the Democratic Cambodia and who were those who re were res most responsible for the crimes? According to other tribunals, the senior leaders could be defined as those who have been suspected of being responsible for the senior positions. It means that those people must have been the senior leaders. Only when those people were holding senior positions that they could really have the power to render orders or command and that they were vested with such power uh, which was part of the criteria to define them as uh, senior leaders. Otherwise, they would not have been suspected uh, of being the most senior people or people most responsible for the crimes. Dutch was the chairman of a prison guard of a security center. How could he be considered as one of the person who is most responsible for the crimes? I would like to draw your honor's attention and the court attention to the categories of those who were res most responsible for the crimes and senior leaders. I would like to start from those, uh, the senior leaders first. Person who had the decision or vested with power to issue orders or commands. We may refer you to article, uh, paragraph rather, 256 of the judgment. Anyone who ordered Deutsch to commit crimes uh, shall be uh, prosecuted. Deutsch who implementing or implemented the orders shall not be prosecuted because he received order from the standing committee or a party center and he was of course a perpetrator, a perpetrator but he shall not fall under the jurisdiction of the ECCC because he received orders from his superiors like the other chief of prisons. We therefore would like to request that the Supreme Court chamber reconsider this. The trial chamber conclude that uh, Deutsch uh, was uh, the senior or the most person responsible for the crimes. They did so only to make sure that uh, the proceedings were a positive, uh, were positive rather. However, by doing so, they have uh, infringed the rule of law and also the Paris Peace Accord of 1991, which states that the Constitution prohibits any crimes committed uh, in the past. These Appendix 5 really grants the amnesty to all the Khmer Rouge former soldiers and leaders or cadres. Article 21 of the agreement, the Paris Peace Accord, states very firmly that uh, all prisoners of war shall be released and civilians who were detained 
had to also be released. And when On Ta came to Cambodia, these people were finally released, and uh, some of them were seen sitting uh, at the table, the negotiation table, and the Khmer Rouge was part of uh, the party who also involved in the election. This suggests that uh, these people were already pardoned. Otherwise, they could not be allowed to take part in the election. But I would like to stress that uh, the Khmer Rouge at that time boycott uh, the election. So I can conclude that the law itself has already found them not liable for any crimes from the 1991 until today. Article 7 of uh, the Penal Code of 2007 states uh, about the determination de uh, de of uh, criminal action and that uh, since the law already uh, been in favor of uh, the senior leaders of the Khmer Rouge, it means that they have already been free and uh, from pro being prosecuted. The judgment of the trial chamber in K001 is a sign of infringement uh, against the uh, Paris Peace Accord of 1991. And at the same time, it infringes Article 7 of the Criminal Procedural Code of 2007. Uh, allow me to make it clear that uh, 20 countries signed uh, on the agreement or the accord the, on the 23rd of October 1991. It means that these 20 countries have to abide by this law. And when the Thai invades, uh, Thai, um, uh, there, there was a dispute between Thailand and Cambodia at the border. There has been an appeal to the international community to really uh, force uh, Thailand to respect uh, this uh, law. And now it is the same at this tribunal that the ECCC shall also respect uh, this rule. Because when Thai does not really obey this uh, regulation, we say that Thai uh, was illegal uh, and we believe that this tribunal would not really follow the footsteps of Thailand. So I can conclude that uh, when Deutsch uh, being implicated uh, as the person falling under personal jurisdiction of the court, it is really not acceptable and that the Supreme Court chamber is now vested uh, with the power to review these uh, jurisdictional matters, in particular to define the persons who are most re responsible for the crimes and senior leaders under this uh, ECC law. During Dutch time, during the Khmer Rouge, there was no law. It was a line. The party line was used instead of the law. There was no court of law. And if there was no law, there was no crime. So Dutch did not really violate uh, Geneva Convention of 1949. Dutch must fall outside the jurisdiction of the ECCC. 
The Defense Council is optimistic uh, that the Supreme Court Chamber will uh, consider the law as in the case of Fenta in Canada uh, Court of Law when the Supreme Court Chamber of Canada found that Fenta fell outside the jurisdiction of the court and that he was released immediately. Appendix 5 of the agreement states further that an individual who violates or who has been violated can appeal such a decision. Now, Deutsch has already appealed before the Supreme Court Chamber, asking this chamber to respect his right, as envisaged in Appendix 5 of the Paris Peace Accord of 1991. According to Article 5, of the law on the outlawing of the Democratic Cambodia group states that this law allows six months after its being enforced uh, to the Khmer Rouge leaders or military groups of the Democratic Cambodia to return or to integrate to live under the administration or rule of the royal government of Cambodia and that they would not uh, be punished for any crimes uh, they have committed. This standard shall be also considered. However, the trial chamber failed to do so and this really harm the Cambodian law in force and it's really against uh, Rule 87.1 of the internal rules of the ECC. Therefore, for the spirits of Article 5 on the outlaw of the Democratic Group, it clearly states that there will be no punishment for offenses they committed. For that reason, even if the committed any crime, the law would not punish him. Therefore, so fall outside the jurisdiction of the ECCC in a pursuant to Article 7 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, that is the extinction of the criminal action. Because of the general pardon stipulated in that law according to Article 6 of the same law for leaders of the Democratic Cambodian Group they cannot be pardoned. So in the spirit of this law all the perpetrators, co-perpetrators, accomplices they shall not be punished for crimes they committed. Only the leaders of the Democratic Cambodia group shall be prosecuted. And though he is he's merely the chief of a prison, and similar to those chiefs of the 195 prisons throughout Cambodia, that they were considered by the trial chamber as perpetrators and they failed outside the jurisdiction of the ECCC. And why only only Dutch out of those 195 prison chiefs failed within the jurisdiction? And I would like your honor to pay attention to this point. Article 9 of the law or the outlawing of the Khmer Rouge clearly states to that effect any person 
who violates the law and violates the right of the people by wrongly accused or wrongly making arrest or detention of people he shall not be punished for crimes they committed. Only the leaders of the Democratic Cambodia group shall be prosecuted. And though he is merely the chief of a prison, uh, similar to those chiefs of the 195 prisons throughout Cambodia, that they were considered by the trial chamber as perpetrators and they failed outside the jurisdiction of the ECCC. And why only only Dutch out of those 195 prison chiefs failed within the jurisdiction? And I would like your honor to pay attention to this point. Article 9 of the law or the outlawing of the Khmer Rus clearly states to that effect any person who violates the law and violates the right of the people by wrongly accused or wrongly making arrest or detention of people will be punished from two to five years imprisonment. I don't want to again and again repeat all those uh, articles. And for Article 2, from the date the law comes into effect, any person who is a member of a political party, a, a military force of the Democratic Kampuchea, so be considered offenders against the constitution and the law of the and the Cambodian law and Dutch came into Cambodia two years and six months before the law comes into effect. And if Dutch did and if Dutch resisted and still continued committing offenses, then Dutch would violate the law. However, from the date of the law coming into effect, Dutch did not commit any offense against the constitution or the law of the Kingdom of Cambodia. Therefore, Dutch, who the chief of S21, he should fall outside the jurisdiction of the ECCC as those of the 195 chiefs of other prisons, and that is the main point on the jurisdiction for your honor's review. And on another point, the appeal by the co-premiers of Cambodia dated the 27th of July 1999, that all civilians or military officers living under the supervision of the Khmer Rouge to find all means to return to integrate with the government. And at that time, the government publicly made an announcement and they will not be punished. Instead, their status and rank will be preserved. And even now at the Ministry of Defense, there are still former Khmer Rouge cadres who have their rank and status. Dutch entered more than two years before such an appeal, and now he is punished. He shall only be punished for his resistance to integrate in the society and continue committing offenses. And Article 7 of the Code of Criminal Procedure 2007 states that the extinction of the criminal action and the reason for such extinction is that the government appealed, made an appeal, and also the government issued such a law in 1999 and also the Paris Peace Accord dated 23rd October 1991 
which pro prohibits the constitution and the law to punish for those who commit the uh, crimes in the past for the aforementioned reasons not so fought outside the jurisdiction of the ECCC. And I urge your honor to review this matter seriously. The trial chamber agreed with the charges by the co-prosecutors who are themselves unclear on the issue whether the accused shall fall under the category of the those most responsible, which clearly stated in the, within the jurisdiction of the ECCC, and it states that even Dutch is not the senior leader of the Democratic Cambodia, he shall be considered falling in the category of those most responsible for the crimes. The concurrence on this unclear stance is a serious error made by the trial chamber, and it contradicts the Rule 87.1 of the Internal Rule of the ECCC, and it contradict Article 38 of the Constitution of the Kingdom of Cambodia, which state that any doubt shall benefit the accused. And the wording that he shall be considered amongst the most responsible, it means it's like 50, 50 percent, percent chance. It's just a possibility. So there is a doubt. And in this case, if doubt exist, the benefit shall be for the accused. And the group of experts were also hesitant more than those stipulated in Article 1, that is, on the determination of those who were most responsible for crimes and grave breaches of national and international laws said that if it were to be true, and that is the wording used by the group of experts, if it were to be true, for such a language, it means there is a doubt and the accused shall be, not, shall be acquitted and not found guilty. Based on the ECCC law, it is a combination of the administrative and criminal standards for the selection to prosecute those senior leaders and most responsible for the crimes committed during the democratic Cambodia regime. It requires the chamber to consider seriously on the matter of personal jurisdiction based on the administrative law of the Kingdom of Cambodia in order to identify those people. In the case of Dutch, there are national documents clearly identifying the role and the status. That is, he is not part of the senior leadership structure or the most responsible for the crimes committed during the democratic Cambodia regime. For that reason, there is no doubt that the accused saw fall outside the jurisdiction of the ECCC. As chief of S21, which is one of the almost 200 prisons throughout Cambodia during the democratic Cambodia, S21 has a, has a less number of casualties who died. And in Chong Chiroi, for exa example, in Kapong Chenang, 150,000 prisoners were killed. And in other prisons, more prisoners died. The point is that the ECCC law does not determine those people who were chiefs of prisons 
falling under the category of those who were most responsible. They were considered falling outside the jurisdiction of the ECCC. This is another, con another point that your Honour should consider regarding the personal jurisdiction of this court. The 195 prisons fall outside the jurisdiction of the ECCC and as only one, which is also another prison, it should automatically fall outside the jurisdiction as well. Or is it because S21 killed less people? That's why it falls under the jurisdiction of the ECC. Maybe if there, there were more than 100,000 or 200,000 people died there, then they would fall outside the jurisdiction. In paragraph 119 of the trial chamber judgment states that amongst those security centers, S21 is the only one with specific characteristic as it has a direct connection with the center and which had the right to detain the cadres of the Communist Party of Kampuchea. So it clearly states that S21 is so special, it's so specific, that's why Dutch has been prosecuted. And the specificity is that it had a direct connection with the center. And that is the only point that the trial chamber relied to prosecute Dutch. And the other chiefs of prisons did not have direct connection with the center, and for that reason they were not prosecuted. And I would urge your honor to review that as well. Sao Pham, who was the third person in the standing committee of the Communist Party, it did, have direct connect, it did not have a direct connection with the center, or is it? And Chet Chun, alias Mok, also control a zone, and he was the fourth person in the center. Why they, why these two fell outside the jurisdiction of the ECDC? Don't you think it has a direct connection with the center? And why only S21 controlled by Sun Sen, who was the seventh member of the standing committee? And another point is that S21 had the role to detain the Khmer Rouge cadres. And if we were to prosecute the chief of S21, it means we try to find a justice for those Khmer Rouge cadres. A handful of uh, people or innocent people were killed by the majority of those who were killed. Based on my estimation, they had their, the blood on their hand. For example, Koi Thun, one way. Before they were brought to S21, they made a decision to kill several people outside. John, uh, I am of the view that this is one of the factors which require the bench to provide further consideration. And in paragraph 677 of the trial chamber judgment, it finds that Kang Gek Yil, alias Dutch, guilty for crimes against humanity. And what is that? Because it states that Dutch enslaved those who were killed, who were sentenced to them. And what happened to the other 195 the prisons where those detainees became millionaires? And why the chamber doesn't find justice for them? And it accused that Dutch detained those people at his center. 
So it means at the 195 centers, those people were detained outside or were they kept in a hotel or something? And also in the same judgment, it states that Dutch was accused of the grave violation of the Geneva Convention of 1949 for willful killing. Let me uh, ask you, as your honor, that what happened to the other 195 prisons? It means were the unwillful killings existed in those centers or prisons? And it states that at S21, Luch tortured the prisoners. Does it mean that torture was not committed at the other prisons? And for inhuman treatment at S21, it means those inhuman treatment were not committed at the 195 prisons? And why the EECC doesn't try to find justice for the other 195 prisons? It also states that S21 illegally detains the civilians. What happened in the other 195 prisons? Were those detainees detained legally? Please consider this. Also in the judgment, 12,373 people were killed at S21. That's why they were, that's why Dutch were, was prosecuted. What about the killings of those thousands, hundreds of thousands at other prisons? Why those chiefs of the prisons were not prosecuted? It means in this judgment, the, pre, the prison chiefs of other prisons were considered perpetrators and they were not prosecuted. Once again, they were considered perpetrators. And only Dutch at S21 and his chief of S21, he also saw be considered perpetrator. The judgment said, Dutch is not a perpetrator in the categories for those 195 prisons. Do you think that is fair? Of course not. The co-prosecutors state in their response that there is no law to charge those other 195 prison chiefs as perpetrators. And if there is the case, how come Deutsche was charged for the same status? So, Deutsche was also a perpetrator as those of the 195 prison chiefs, and he saw fall outside the jurisdiction of the ECCC. These are the conditions of personal jurisdiction that I would urge your honor to review. In the indictment, in the amended indictment, it states that as the deputy secretary of the S21, he led the integration team and joined in the establishment of S21 and gave instruction to the integration team how to interrogate. So as the deputy chief of S21, he had an overall supervision of S21, including making annotations on the confessions and the order to kill. S21 is the most important prison for the democratic Cambodia and considered as part of the infrastructure of the Communist Party of Cambodia as it reported directly to the highest echelon of the regime and it operated throughout the country and it received senior cadres and other people throughout the country. The trial chamber agreed to that allegation by the co by in the indictment without relying on any legal basis. 
in order to make the accused fall within the category of the most responsible person as it considered as when one was an important center. And there is no legal basis for such assertion in identifying those who were most responsible. Does the law have to adjudicate the prison management throughout the country or does it only adjudicate the person or persons who were most responsible? In theory, the law on identifying those who were most responsible relied on the discretion of the person based on his authority within the status determined in the administrative structure and law. And as the secretary of S21, Dutch had the role to only receive the prisoners who were sent throughout the country, then they would be interrogated and they would be sent to be smashed based on the orders from the upper echelon. This does not mean he is the one who had the most responsible responsibility as the acts did not derive from his own discretion and his acts were identical to those acts performed by chiefs of other prisons throughout the country. Another mistake is that S21 was considered that it was formed with the participation of the accused. That is incorrect. Based on his minor role as deputy secretary of S21 and within the political framework that he is not a member of the standing committee, the accused had no ability to provide opinion through the party on all issues in relation to the security policy and measure. Such allegation is preposterous. In fact, lawyers acknowledge that the prison section is an apparatus of the state and all establishments or dissolutions or modifications are within the decision of the state. No single person or two persons can form such an establishment. S21 was established according to the decision of the standing committee during their meeting in October 75, giving the authority to Sun Sen, who is a member of the standing committee, to be in charge on the security. Throughout the world, the prison, the police or the military police, they are the tools of the state. They are under the commands of the state. And the state shall be the legal entity to be responsible. And that means Pol Pot, Sunset, etc. They were the one who issued order. And now when mistakes were made and only the tool were to blame and Dutch was just a tool used by those people and he saw fall outside the jurisdiction of the ECCC for that reason. In paragraph 2 of in, in paragraph 2 of uh, 33 of the indictment, Dutch as secretary of the S21, he had no de facto authority 
for the overall supervision. He only had the authority to disseminate information from the upper echelon. That here, if we have to look at the structure of the party, there would be the secretary, that is for both, and then the zone secretary or the division secretary, and number three, the sector secretary, and then the regiment, etc., and number four, the secretary of the district committees, or the office committee, as in the case of Dutch. So Dutch would fall in the four category which is the lowest rank within the party hierarchy. Dutch was just a minor secretary who had no real authority to make decisions or to do anything contradictory to the directions from or the orders from the upper echelon. Therefore, he could not be considered the most responsible person. According to the opinion of Judge Cartwright, who states that the Communist Party of Cambodia was the one who identified the enemies and who ordered the arrest of those enemies. And she states that the accused was not aware of the secret decision dated 30 March 76. Therefore, he could not be said he participated in the planning of such policy. This clearly states that Dutch was not the one who was most responsible for the crimes uh, mentioned above. This is another condition to be considered in regard to jurisdiction, and I would urge your honor to review that as well. There are other evidence that proves that Deutsche had no power to make any decision for any arrest or detention of uh, prisoners. For example, in the case of Goitun, Won Wade, and Nat, they were arrested upon orders from superiors, including Son Sen. And uh, Peng Ton, Rut Kut, and other people, including uh, Dutch in law, were also arrested, and that he had no power to intervene. For this reason, it is true that uh, Dutch was not most responsible for the crimes and grave breaches or violations of uh, domestic and international laws. And these are part of the jurisdictional condition that need to be well reviewed by the chamber. The president interrupts uh, council. Uh, please be informed that uh, uh, it is now time for morning adjournment and you still have 50 minutes uh, left. I think uh, you may take the opportunity after the break uh, to proceed with the remaining of your oral submission. We will now take the morning adjournment. here. So, the President, please be seated. The President, the court is now back in session. 
The defense counsel may now resume his oral statement. Council vote. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would like now to continue my oral submission. We would like the bench to review Article 99 of the previous Penal Code. Acts are not considered criminal offenses when they are ordered. Based on the 1956 Penal Code, only the person or the entity who ordered shall be punished. For example, Sun Sen who ordered Dutch to commit those acts. And uh, number two, I would like also the uh, chamber to consider the same 1956 Penal Code of Article 238 and Article 24 of the Penal Code of 2009. It means only those who ordered shall be punished and not the perpetrators. The 2009 Penal Code Article 24 person is shall be responsible for criminal action for which he or she commits. The acts that Deutsch committed was not of his own initiative. It was they were from his superior. And in between 1970 to 1975, the U.S. President Richard Nixon, who ordered the bombing, in Cambodia by the military commander Clayton Abram. And the order was from the authority of the U.S. presidency. And it means that he knew the act was wrong, but he had no choice but to drop those bombs to follow those orders. So, Therefore, the one who issued the comments shall be the guilty one, not the one who committed the act. And another point that is from 75 to 17, from 17 April 75 to the 30th of March 76, within that period, Dutch was at Omlian. And when he entered Phnom Penh, he was the deputy chief of prison. For that reason, he did not involve in the establishment of the prison. And at that time, he was at Om Leng when, and he was not aware of the evacuation of people from the city. He was at a lower rank, as I stated earlier, and from the 30th of March 76 to the 6th January 79, Please review the document 00003136 of the Office of the Co-Prosecutors. And the document is in the case file. It has a list of the names of the senior leadership of the Democratic Campuchia and those who were most responsible. So they were the leaders, the senior leaders of the Democratic Campuchia. The document is the decision of the uh, Central Committee and with the list of the names of those who were the members. And they were the leaders who led to the uh, killing. And then for those who were most responsible, what are they? The names are listed there. The seven persons ordered four groups of people to commit the act of killing throughout the Cambodia. That is, the decision to kill inside and outside the rank. Within the framework of the basis, the Central Committee shall decide. And how many zones? There are seven zones. And within the seven zones, was Deutsche amongst those zones? No. S21 fell outside of those seven zones. 
And for the second group, it meant at the, in the area surrounding the office, so be decided by the office of the center, that is the office 870. And Dutch did not uh, work within that office. And for uh, the autonomous zone, how many? They were Kampong Saum, Simriap, Previhir, and Udamin Jay. That's the autonomous zones. Dutch was not within that zone. And for those autonomous zones, the standing committee saw the side. And for the force groups, therefore, the Central Army. And who would be the general staff? That would be Sun Sen. Dutch did not have the authority to issue any decision. He only received the order from his superior. So that is a critical document. It has all the names of those people for the categories I just mentioned. So I please urge your honor to review the document in order to determine who were the senior leaders and who were those most responsible for the crimes. They were Dutch was not one of them. Also, I would like to urge your honor to, to enforce the new article of the Constitution, that is Article 129 New, which states that the fair shall be, the trial shall be fair and regular, and it shall be conducted in behalf of the Cambodian people based on the existing law and procedures. Fair justice shall be done based on the procedures and Article 12 of the agreement between the UN and the Cambodian government clearly states to that effect that the Cambodian law shall be used because this is a national court. It is not an international court. Therefore, it has to use the domestic law. And the existing law, as I said, there are a number of existing laws, that is, our penal code, the criminal procedure, the law on the outlawing of the Khmer Rouge, the Paris Peace Accord, etc., and etc. There is no need to refer to the international law. That is uh, my appeal to your honor. That is based on the interpretation of Article 129 New of the Constitution. And I would like to urge your honor to set aside the judgment in case 001 and to acquit Dutch. And number two, I would urge your honor to consider the detention of Dutch is a form of protection for a potential witness in identifying senior leaders of the Democratic Amici and those who were most responsible for crimes. And finally, I would like to give the floor to my colleague, to Mr. Kong Ratiri. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors. I would like to apologize to the families of the victims who were victims at S21. I stand here today not to hide the heinous crimes committed at S21. And even if I want to hide the crimes, I can't do it. And I hope right now here, everybody knows about the crimes committed at S21. I am standing here as a defense lawyer to my full capacity to defend my client based on the law, on the universal declaration of the rights, political and civil rights. And I can assert that my client does not fall under the jurisdiction of this chamber, of this court. I am here in order to make sure that my right, my client enjoys the full rights accorded to him. And also to provide legal assistance to my client. 
I will try to do it to my best capacity in order to make sure that the Supreme Court Chamber will use this forum not for political vengeance or to lend a hand to the ECCC to make a political cleansing. And I thank you for that. Based on the agreement between the UN and the government of Cambodia, the ECCC was established to prosecute, to bring to trial those who committed the crimes, war crimes, and genocide and grave breaches of the Geneva Convention of 1949. The agreement is to find justice for the Cambodian people, for reconciliation, peace, and to respect the sovereignty of Cambodia. In the preamble of the agreement between the UN and the government, as in the decision of the Security Council, it expressed the concerns in relation to the great bridges of the Cambodian law and for the crimes committed between 75 and 79. The concerns led to led the Security Council to issue its decision, number 57-228, recognizing the concern by the Cambodian people and the government in finding the justice and for the stability and peace and sovereignty of Cambodia. And that is the official recognition of the concerns expressed by the Cambodian government by the United Nations. That is the proper recognition as the first step for the establishment of the ECCC. And also it stated in Article 1, it means that in, for the concern of the Cambodian government of Cambodia in being to trial is stated in Article 1, and the establishment is the achievement between the UN and the royal government of Cambodia. And that is expressed in Article 1 and 2 of the law of the ECCC law on the restriction and on the authority of the ECCC. Article 2 of the agreement and, and Article 1 and 2 of the ECCC law, the ECCC is empowered with restrictions on the jurisdiction for the prosecution. ECCC has the power to bring to trials for the crimes, for the war crimes, genocide, crimes against humanity, and the great breaches of the Geneva Convention of 1949. And the ECC has the power and authority to bring to trial for the crimes committed within the period of 17 April 75 to 6 January 79 and 3. The ECC has the power to bring to trial and prosecute for crimes committed within the territory of Cambodia. And number four, the ECC has the power to bring to trial those senior leaders and those who were most responsible for crimes committed. During the controversial hearing, the defense team raised the issue of the personal jurisdiction for the accused Kang Gajiv Elias Luch and that they saw review and examine the evidence in relation to the Articles 1 and 2 on the, on the ECC law. And Judge Khan Wright also accord to the assertion raised by the defense that Dutch had no authority on the decision to kill those people who were found to be committed in the secret document dated 30 March 1976, and the identification of the document was already provided by my colleague. 
So it means that he did not have the most responsible responsibility for the, those crimes committed. And that is also stated in the judgment in paragraph 397 to 99. Also, the request by the defense team to review the personal jurisdiction, it clearly states that there is ample evidence that the trial chamber did not have the jurisdiction over Dutch, but they failed to examine those evidence, and the trial was subsequently concluded. The defense team also tried again in their closing argument, appealing the bench to examine those uh, excavatory evidence on the issue of jurisdiction based on the spirit of the establishment of the ECC and the ECCC law. Once again, the trial chamber failed to examine the excavatory evidence requested by the defense team and the opinion of Judge Cartwright, and as a result, on the 26th of July 2010, the trial chamber pronounced a judgment in case 001, dated 18 July 2007, finds Kangeyelis guilty for the crimes committed at accident one under the direct supervision of Son Sen, the general staff, and he is convicted to a single sentence of 35 years of imprisonment. Based on the notice of appeal against the judgment dated 26 July 2010 of the trial chamber, in that, the defense team argues that the conviction raised by, made by the trial judgment is wrong as Dutch failed outside the jurisdiction of the ECCC. And we also provided the following arguments. One, that is on the error of the jurisdiction, of personal jurisdiction by the trial chamber. The trial chamber extend its authority, expanded outside the Article 1 of the agreement and Article 2, 1 and 2 on the establishment of the ECCC law so that Dutch would fall under the jurisdiction of the ECCC despite the document dated 30 May 76 on the decision to smash inside and outside the rank. Dutch was not within that structure or hierarchy, and based on the report by the expert Greg Edgerson, who was for the office of the co-prosecutor, Sunshine had the direct decision to make, and Pong and Lin was the one who was in charge above Dutch. under the general staff of the Ministry of Defense for those who were arrested and sent to S21. Those arrests were made after the decision made at the Central Committee. The trial chamber fails to properly examine the personal jurisdiction as stated in Article 1 of the agreement and Articles 1 and 2 new of the ECCC law and against the customary law that was used in Tokyo as well. In November and Tokyo trials, the court did not prosecute those who were the soldiers of the Allied, even if they knew that they committed the same crimes as the enemy in Europe and for the war criminals because of the restriction of the personal jurisdiction imposed upon those courts. And there is no person who were leaders 
At the lower level, were prosecuted only the senior leaders who committed those crimes, or the general, or the general military generals who were prosecuted. And the court itself is not allowed to expand its authority in order to prosecute the allies' soldiers or to bring to trials for those uh, soldiers, even if they committed the same uh, crimes, even if uh, some were more serious. It means that in general the court has to, has to abide by the jurisdiction set upon them. They could only charge those who were within their jurisdiction, even if other people committed the same or more serious crimes. However, at the ECCC, it acts contradictorily. It did not have any evidence to link to Article 1 of the agreement or Articles 1 and 2 new of the ECCC law on the issue of the jurisdiction of my client. Also, the ECC also uh, relied a lot on the jurisprudence of the ICTR and ICTY on the uh, jurisdiction in regards to the subject matter, but not on the personal jurisdiction. It means the, the statute of the ICTY and ICTR are not similar to the ECCC law. The distinction is the restriction of the personal jurisdiction at ICTR and ICTY and Rambach and Tokyo. There was no restriction on personal jurisdiction. In fact, in ECC there is sufficient and ample jurisdiction and there is no need to refer to other law or jurisprudence if it is needed, then it has to be consistent with the existing law and legal instruments in Cambodia based on the agreement in Article 1 between the UN and Cambodia. The use of other international law is only to implement, to complement the lacuni in the domestic existing laws or the laws at the ECCC, and they have to be consistent with the ECCC. The system used in the ECCC, which is a sovereign state, is the priority. As we all know, ECC is not an independent court like an ICTR or ICTY. This is a domestic court. So it is within the territory of the uh, country which utilizes the civil law system. The use of the common law system by the trial chamber is, the, is a distraction of the civil law system that is currently used in the state which the ECC law falls under and which set out in the agreement between the UN and the EC in the government of Cambodia. ECC is all use a complete civil law system. Therefore, the principle of a legality shall be respected. Based on that, it shows that the, the trial chamber violated Article 2 new of the uh, of the ECC law. That it it extend it expanded it. It expands its power beyond what is set out in the law. The use of the legal, international legal instrument is not appropriate because the jurisprudence of case law is to be used only when it has to examine in details for the uh, crimes committed. That is the first option, and the second option is to examine the legal system which is in existence, whether it is parallel or consistent. And the third point is in order to determine whether there is a lacuna 
for the judgment that is issued based on the options one and two about. ECC restricts the personal jurisdiction, which is not the same as the statute of the ICTR, ICTY, the Nuremberg or the Tokyo, as personal jurisdiction is not considered. But here, they are set out clearly in the ECC law. The trial chamber failed to examine and review these three points, which were taught clearly in any law school throughout the world. The civil law and the common law system are not the same. And for the judge to interpret a law based on the civil law system, we all know that the judge cannot create a law by himself or herself and cannot, cannot expand the authority of the law by himself or herself as well. And this practice has been taught in the legal law that a judge cannot expand his or her authority and that also is applicable only to the common law system. ECC is within the sovereign states that use the civil law system. This, this has been expressly reflected in Articles 13 and 12 and 13 of the agreement between the UN and the government and Article 5 of the Cambodian Penal Code. Article 12 of the agreement allows the ECCC to apply the Cambodian law, and only where there is a lacuna in Cambodian law that guidance may also be sought at the international level. This means that one cannot seek any international law unless the above situation prevails otherwise it is in contradiction to the Cambodian law. The excessive application by analogy at the ECC runs counter to Article 5 of the Cambodian Penal Code. It can also be viewed that the ECC, by following the common law tradition, Propio Motu expands its jurisdiction and arbitrarily adjudicates cases. It means that they have to look also at the evidence filed and submitted by the defense team. Also, the new documents that we submit to the Supreme Court Chamber, the documents that we receive from DC CAM, that is F14.2.4, ERN 00626210, that is the selected 31 biographies of Khmeru's leaders and others. And they made a conclusion for those who shall be prosecuted. The assertion that Article 1 and 2 new of the ECC law is not clear is not appropriate. According to Rule 87, the judges shall examine the evidence and to use his or her profession before a person can be charged under Articles 1 and 2, and also Article 28 of the new Penal Code of Cambodia defines the person who would be the perpetrator and is the instigator, that is, those who gives an instruction to commit a felony or misdemeanor or provokes the commission of a felony or a misdemeanor by means of a gift, promise, threat, incitement, coaxing, or abuse of his her authority or power. That is consistent to the decision dated 30 March 1976 of the standing committee as my colleague just uh, raised earlier. 
The decision actually determined uh, who issued orders and who shall be responsible for the crimes or most responsible for the crimes. And for that reason, we should not resort to other criminal laws to interpret uh, such uh, a case. Uh, we only need to uh, look at the law available before us. An instigator shall only be liable to punishment if the commission or of or attempt to commit felony or misdemeanor is established. Articles 1 and 2 of the 